Hey everyone, how do you stand out on YouTube from your competitors or from the crowd? How do you differentiate your channel from other people's channels? Uh, what makes you different? So these are just some of the questions that we're going to talk about today. And uh, I think, <clears throat> especially since there's millions of people on YouTube and many millions of videos being, or thousands of videos being uploaded every day on YouTube, it's getting more and more competitive. So if you're gonna start a YouTube channel or if you already have an established YouTube channel, how do you stand out from your competitors or stand out on YouTube when there's so many other people that are in the same niche? So, we're going to look at eight ways that you can stand out on YouTube in 2020 and beyond. And then we're also going to look at some examples along the way. My name is Herman Drost, and my channel is all about how to grow your audience on YouTube so you can generate traffic, leads, and sales on autopilot. Uh, with YouTube, you know, once you you have a video that ranks on the first page of YouTube and or Google or both, or appears in suggested videos, then you can get a lot of traffic that you can send to a landing page, send to a product, or impact others in your niche. So that's the beautiful thing about YouTube. So I wanna uh, welcome everybody here. We've got uh, Portland Angel, we got Chris. Oh, yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I forgot about that. And uh, actually, one of my kids just reminded me to get a gift for my wife. So probably after this live stream, I'll, I'll uh, have to attend to that, uh, get some flowers or something. But um, yeah, so I want to uh, go into these eight different ways. I'm sure there's a bunch more. But I, the question I have for you guys and gals is... What makes your channel stand out from others in your niche? You know, put that in the chat, or if you're watching replay, put that in the comments. But uh, I'm going to switch over to my slides here, and uh, so I just thought I'd show you this image. You know, how can you stand out, or how how can you get noticed on YouTube in 2020 and beyond? That makes your channel stand out from the crowd. So what we're going to be looking at is, you know, how do you target the right audience? How do you differentiate your channel from your competitors? How do you, how do you reduce the competition? How to leverage other platforms? How to collaborate with others in your niche? How to identify traffic patterns in your channel? And how to use paid ads to steal your competitors' traffic. So those are some of the things that we're going to be covering in this live stream. So the, uh, the first one is uh, knowing your audience. So I put this image up here. Know your audience or you'll have no audience. So um, I think one of the, the toughest things for people on YouTube is uh, you know what what kind of content are you go are going to create? You know you probably have a lot of ideas about what content you want to create, but unless you're your own target audience, then if you just create the videos that you want to create, then you may not be in touch with your audience, and you may turn off your audience, or they may go elsewhere. So. So when it comes to knowing your audience, uh, probably some of the techniques you can use is that you can visit forums, Facebook groups, um, visit other channels, and, you know, look at the comments and look at uh, most frequently asked questions that appear in people's comments or your own comments. And so the, the more they can drill down into who is your ideal subscriber? So, you know, what age they are, 
what problems do they have? What value can you bring to them? So the more you can drill down to who is your ideal subscriber. So when you then create your video, you're not just talking to, say you have a thousand subscribers, you're not just talking to a thousand people. You want to zero in on that ideal customer, that ideal subscriber, and try to you know tap into their mind. You know, what problems are they thinking about? What uh, um, what are they striving to accomplish? You know, with their uh, in the niche, and uh, what 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 is it? What is it that you can bring the most value to them, so that they can really become a fan or a subscriber of your channel? So those are just some of the things to look at. And then also, I think you, it's good to know uh, what, do you, what do you want to be known for? So I put a, um, I kind of addressed that question in my Facebook group and on my community tab. And so I put up some examples here and you probably, some of you are here, but uh, I'm going to show you that. So here's some of the uh, feedback I got. Chris, I know that you're here. Thanks for that feedback. Says the, the wide variety of topics, the different angles you take on the topics. I can usually find what I need to know from you, so why go anywhere else? And it's especially easy now you put in the year it was published. So just like this video is how to get noticed on YouTube in 2020. So it, uh, it's not, you know, 2017 or 2015, etc. Uh, clearly seen says about you know what what they like about uh, what differentiates me from my competitors like your videos because you give honest advice on how to get a YouTube channel to grow giving all the real working methods away for free my channel is about 430 subscribers away from hitting a thousand subs thanks for all that you do and Bastian, I don't know if that's the right name, uh, how to pronounce it, but for a few reasons, but mainly the way you explain things so everybody can understand and follow up step by step. Also, voice is important. So uh, those are uh, just some of the, oh, I think I have one more here. Maybe I have to move that one up a bit. And the last one says uh, from Son uh, Sophia, I know you care. So definitely, yeah, I definitely care about you know, helping other people uh, grow their channels, make an impact uh, on uh, with their interests and, you know, what they want to share on their channels. So that's a, that's a big thing. So uh, another thing is, um, let's move this down here. Number two is create a unique selling proposition. So, um, this uh, refers to how to differ how do you differentiate your channel from your competitors channel so unique selling proposition is usually in business they talk about uh, how can you uh, be different to another business or to your competitors so um so what what is it about your channel that differentiates yourself differentiate yourself from other channels what is unique what is your unique selling proposition? So I've got some examples here from the outside world. So some of you probably watch Netflix, unlimited movies, TV shows or more, watch anywhere, cancel any time. Avis rental cars, we're number two, we try harder. You know what number one is, what's, what's number one? Uh, FedEx Corporation, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. M&M's, the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Domino's Pizza, you get fresh hot pizza delivered to your door in 30 minutes or less, or it's free. So this is just some examples of unique selling propositions, or you could say a tagline that identifies that corporation, that business, and distinguishes them from their competitors. So the question would be, you know, what is there, a, if you have a tagline for your channel, 
uh, put that in the chat. We watch the replay, put it in the comments. But uh, do you have a specific tagline that uh, summarizes the content of your channel? I put up a few here from members uh, from my Facebook group. So show you some examples. This was from Bastion. He's, uh, he's always in uh, traveling around in Europe, but he's got on his banner, he's got best places to travel. So subscribe and join out to our adventures around the world. And Lisa, I don't know if Lisa's here today, but uh, Lisa does quilts. So um, you can't read that very well, but uh, a good tagline she has there is one, one stitch at a time. That could probably be larger uh, instead of just putting the Lisa cap and quilts. And then Harley, who has uh, been with us a while, I don't think he's here, but um, House, of ha House of Hacks, Projects, How-Tos, Reviews, Woodworking, Metalworking, Electronics, and Photography. So he's got a lot of stuff going on there. And then uh, I've got my channel that's uh, called a two boot camp because you're, you're kind of in a boot camp learning how to grow your channel. But I've got a tagline, grow your audience with video. So I might change that because uh, it's kind of general. But I've been thinking what, a, what is even a, a uh, even better tagline that kind of is more specific. So maybe I might change that this year. But I haven't, uh, no brainwave has uh, entered my mind as yet. But uh, yeah, what's the question? What is your USP? So, um, oh, Hertz is number one, Chris says. Yeah, so Hertz and then Avis. But yeah, what is your USP? You know, if you don't have one um, that you can put in your channel banner that summarizes your content, because, you know, when you... Um, when people first go to your uh, channel, uh, to your channel homepage, the first thing they see is the channel banner. So if you have a tagline there that in three words or four, four words encapsulates the content of your channel, then immediately people might subscribe or might want to dive deeper into your content. So it's definitely uh, something to think about. Uh, what what kind of tagline or what kind of USP? Uh, you have to think of something that's memorable, that's short, and that encapsulates your content. Okay, next thing is uh, branding. So branding is very very important because, as you can see here. These are the branding colors of different big companies like Ikea, Amazon, Coca-Cola, Instagram, Dell, WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Um, when it comes to branding, it's, it's something that sets you apart from your competitors, makes you stand out. So you can think of uh, particular branding colors that kind of reinforce your channel, reinforce your content. Uh, enhance your content. So um, I would say that pick a color or a series of colors. You can use the uh, color wheel that I think if you Google color wheel, you probably get a good color wheel. But here's some of the uh, branding elements to consider. You know, when you're putting your channel together or if you have a channel then uh, definitely the first thing is the banner because that's the first thing that people see. And then your channel icon should also be prominent. Then you're going to have your channel trailer, which summarizes the content of your channel in a one to three minute video. And then your about page, which should have like one or two paragraphs emphasizing the benefits of subscribing to your channel. And then the branding watermark is something that you can put on all the videos across your channel that appears in the bottom right hand corner of every video. So when people go to watch your video, they see that branding watermark. And in thumbnails, you know, design a thumbnail that is different to your competitors thumbnails. 
And then you've also got playlists, which you put on the channel homepage. So for example, here's my channel. So we've got the uh, channel banner at the top with a tagline. You can even put, um, you know, your schedule, new videos every Monday and Thursday. Uh, you got the channel icon here on the left. Then you've got the channel banner. And then you've got the um, the playlists. Let's see, let's move that down. Let's see if I... So you got sections containing playlists down the bottom. So um, so you can see it's kind of you know similar colors. I got blue and black and red, which uh, kind of identifies my channel colors at the moment. But um, you definitely want to have these branding elements. So I think the channel banner, channel trailer, your thumbnails, your channel icon, these are all channel, channel elements that go into the brand of your channel and it helps differentiate your channel from your competitors. So instead of copying your competitors, you just want to, uh, you know, find a way that you can stand out from all the other channels. So there's just some things to consider. Uh, number four, reduce the competition. How can you, how can you get less competition? Uh, one of the, the um, big factors of reducing your competition is you know if you have if you're in a very competitive field then when you go to make a video then it's very hard to stand out from your competitors if they have big channels or how do you as a small channel how do you compete with the bigger channels so here are some of the here are some of the things you can do so if I can, uh, so how do you stand out from the crowd? Uh, number one, you want to find less competitive keywords. So, so when you're doing a search in uh, TubeBuddy or YouTube search box or Morning Fame, um, then uh, you want to find. Uh, so, say for instance, you had. Um, I think I gave an example a while back uh, how to how to make a bird cage, for instance, how to make a bird house or how to make a bird cage, I think of a bird house. So that would be a very competitive term. But then how to make a bird cage in 24 hours. You know, if that's that's like, like a longer tail keyword phrase. So maybe the big channels they are ranking already for how to how to make a bird house. But then you as a small channel that is all about birdhouses can target long tail keyword phrases that differentiate you from your competitors. So you're not going to rank for how to how to build a birdhouse, but you can find those long tail keyword phrases. So what you what you're doing is you're looking for less competitive keyword phrases that are easy to rank for. They may not have a High, high search volume is how to build a birdhouse, but you could you could make like 20 different videos on long tail keywords, how to build a birdhouse in 24 hours, how to build a birdhouse um, on farmland, for instance, or something like that. But you'd, you'd have to look, do a, a keyword uh, research to find all those competitive keyword phrases. And I highly recommend using something like TubeBuddy to quickly find those long tail keyword phrases, uh, how to build a birdhouse in in 2020. So, and then when you've when you've identified those keyword phrases, create videos around that, and it'll be easy to rank for the larger keyword phrases as your um, video picks up steam. And then the other thing is uh, your titles. And your thumbnails so 
create compelling video tiles. There's a video on that a while back, but um, create a compelling video title and design unique thumbnails. So your, your title and your thumbnail should work together to win the click. So when you create like how to build a birdhouse, for instance, in 24 hours, um, you can even add something more to the end of the keyword phrase. So you could say how to build a birdhouse in 24 hours without nails, for instance, or um, four, four amazing secrets or some, you know, something like that, that then then I'll capture the viewer's attention. So instead of sort of like a boring phrase like how to build a birdhouse, you're putting something at the end. So it could be my secret formula or 10 top tips or something like that. So the whole idea is that uh, you're creating a compelling title and then with your thumbnail, you don't want to put the exact title in your thumbnail, but make sure that the thumbnail is different to your competitors, uh, stands out, you know, before you design your thumbnail, then uh, check out competitive thumbnails and see what is there that, that uh, you can do differently. I mean, if you put your face in it, it's going to be different. You could put a logo in there. Uh, you could have different colors. Uh, you could have no face and just have some different icons. So there's all these different ways, but um, the main thing is that you want to test, you know, your different titles, different thumbnails, and you can use TubeBuddy, the legend version. You can do an A-B split testing, um, or you can use Thumbnail Blaster, which you can do split testing as well. But um, I think it's worth testing because sometimes if you get a high click-through rate, on a thumbnail, then that means more of your videos will get promoted or surfaced on other people's channels. So it's definitely worth testing. So uh, standing up for the crowd, less competitive, find, find those less competitive keywords, create compelling video titles. You can watch my uh, video on I, I did a whole series on video titles recently so you can watch those and designing unique thumbnails uh just an aside while i'm talking about thumbnails um i was approached recently by a friend that uh is a graphic designer so if you have a very hard time designing thumbnails then definitely let me know if you want to get your thumbnails designed, uh, you have beautiful thumbnails designed for a reasonable price, probably around 15 bucks, something like that. Uh, but you know, if you have an interest in that, just let me know and uh, we'll get something hooked up for you. Okay, next one is uh, number five, repurposing your video content. So how how's repurposing your video content Going to, going to uh, make your channel get noticed or make your content get noticed. Well, you, you, get, you get noticed on YouTube, but um, you can, with the idea of repurposing your video content, is that you're getting it out to a different audience. So instead of just YouTube, you can get it on you can send it out on Twitter, you can post it on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, all these different, different social media sites. But uh, you can also post it on your blog. So here's some repurposing ideas. Social media sites, uh, probably it's a good idea to kind of rescale some of your graphics or you know if you're using image graphics then uh, you can post that to Instagram or do IGTV or stories etc uh, you can tra transcribe your video so uh, usually I transcribe my videos so that people that are uh, hard of hearing can 
see the captions under the video. Uh, some people might be in a library or at work where they don't want to have the sound turned on. So then uh, they can uh, they can see the captions but not uh, not have the sound turned on. And then you can take that transcript and you can post it to your blog or website and embed your video there. So um, so what what I've found is that when you do that, some of your videos or some of your content will appear in Google search. So you get the best of both worlds. You get uh, uh, you get your content ranking in Google search and your content ranking in YouTube search. So if it's a uh, blog post, if, you, if, if you've embedded your video, sometimes the YouTube video thumbnail will appear in YouTube search and, and Google search. So then you can get a lot of traffic from people searching Google and then also people searching on YouTube. Email list, you know, build your own email list. I'll touch on that later, how you can quickly build an email list, but um, you can offer a lead magnet or a free report or a cheat sheet or a mini video course. So all these things um, is a great way to like, if you build an email list, then, uh, you know, if something happens to your channel, then you, you actually own that email list and you can, you can get, you can, you can survey your list, you can email list, email your list with, uh, with new videos. So uh, that's a great way to repurpose. And then also infographics, you know, you can use something like, uh, I think Chris was saying um, about using Canva. So what you can do is you can go to some a place like the free online graphics software Canva, and they even have templates in there for infographics. So you could do, uh, and I've sometimes done this in the past where I've, taken the content from a video so like the top 10 points and then I've created a checklist and offered it as a free download to my subscribers so in return for their contact information so you just pick up pick one of the templates in Canva create a quick uh, checklist and then you can uh, offer, offer that to your subscribers and also you can uh, you could create an a infographic that also appears in Google search. So if you've uh, labeled it uh, clear, uh, correctly, then sometimes those graphics can appear as images in Google search. So there's something to think about. Document sharing is another way. But um, one thing you can do is, you know, if you transcribe your video, you can convert it into a PDF document, then upload that document to PDF sharing sites like SlideShare, Scribd. Uh, if you Google document sharing sites, there's a whole bunch of uh, free ones that you, and this is another way you can, you can share your content out to people that are not, not on YouTube. Uh, another, another idea is the uh, podcast. So what you can do is you just take your video file and then you can uh, just download the audio file from your uh, .mp4 from your uh, YouTube file and then use that as, uh, as an audio file or podcast that you can upload to iTunes uh, and other podcast sharing sites. So you actually, you actually positioning your content in a different community. So it could be a podcast community or um, forums, etc. And you can even do a blog, blog posts. You know, you can do a, a blog post about your particular video content. And then, if, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of bloggers are interested in getting new content to their blog because they don't have time to do it themselves. So, if you offer a free blog post, or maybe you can even embed your video, then you can expose your content to 
their audience. On oh, no, Chris is saying that do you know how to strip the voice out of the video so you can do a podcast with it? Well, I use ScreenFlow um, to uh, separate. You know, I do that on the timeline when I edit, but uh, it separates the audio from the video. Uh, but if you don't have a Mac, you know, then you're not going to use that. But I think uh, I'd have to check on that. But I think if you use something like Capwing, uh, capwing.com, it's a great little tool that's free. And you can, I think they have a, a way there that you can uh, just, you know, enter your, <clears throat> enter your video or upload your video or put your video URL in there and you can strip out the audio. So check that out. Okay. Um, oh, and Ali's saying here that we're going to high ticket affiliate program list PDF as offer for leads. So yeah, that's a great idea. You can uh, you can create a PDF. Um, you can even use a Google uh, Google Docs. You know, you can just uh, put your content into a Google Doc. And then you can save it as a PDF. That'll be something very, uh, very quick and easy to do once you have the content. And then you can offer it as a free download. So that's a great idea. Okay, moving right along. So we have repurposing ideas. Uh, I have a video on 21 different ways that you can repurpose your content. Maybe I'll put that in the description I'll make a note of that so people can check that out but uh, these are just some ideas let's see any others uh, Facebook group is another one so um, if you're not a member of face member of my Facebook group then um, just go to facebook.com forward slash groups to video bootcamp and you can become a part of my Facebook group Okay, number six is collaborate. So collaborations are great because you can share your content with somebody else's audience. So instead of just your own subscribers, you're sharing your content with the person's audience that you're collaborating with, and then they can share their content with your audience. So you're doing a kind of a cross collaboration. So exposing your content to a different audience rather than your own. Uh, you can gain more subscribers because people see uh, that you are unique. You explain things in a unique way that's different to the uh, channel they have subscribed to. So they might resonate better with you. So uh, that will increase the views to your channel. Uh, it's a good way to uh, expose or spread your brand. And also you can build a relationship with another creator in your niche. So it's a great way to kind of expose your content to other people's channels. Okay, I'm just looking at the questions here. Okay, so uh, those are some of the benefits. And uh, I think when you're doing collaborations, one good thing to do is to kind of make sure you have some kind of similar audiences. You know, maybe they have a thousand subscribers. You might have 2,000 subscribers. So that's kind of similar. And then when you approach a, a person to do a collaboration, make sure you offer value first. You know, what... What can you bring to the table? What can you bring to their audience that will be of value? So maybe you want to check out their channel and see, um, is there something different that you can offer or approach the topic at a different angle that they haven't covered? 
instead of just uh, saying to the uh, same person in itch, hey, you want to do a collaboration? So it doesn't really mean much because, uh, you know, what value are you bringing to the audience? So before you approach someone to collaborate with, you know, check, uh, maybe check what kind of videos they're doing, check the size of the audience. Uh, even if you're a small, small YouTuber or small channel and you approach a large channel, if you see the large channel doesn't have something that, that you could offer that is really unique, then they might take you up on it. So all, all they can say is uh, no. So um, it's definitely worth a try. But, you know, it's a great way to expose your content to somebody else's channel. Okay, next one is looking for traffic patterns. So the idea is to identify those patterns on your channel where the traffic is coming from. And the way to do this is to go into your YouTube analytics, YouTube studio. And you want to look at, you know, you want to look at your top videos. You know, what are the top 10 videos or top 20 videos on your channel that are getting the most traffic? And then once you've done that, you want to drill down into more specifics. So I've got an example here, like, like if you go to YouTube Studio, I don't know if you have this, but they have these cards now. Like if you go to the Analytics tab, uh, YouTube Studio Analytics, then go to Overview, then often get these cards, say, you know, especially your channel's growing, it says views are up, your channel got 212,000 views in the last 28 days. That's more than the 162,000 your channel usually gets. So that's a good sign your channel is growing. But when you see that, then you say, well, what? And then they also give you the uh, top videos. So if you go to the next tab, to, to like your reach tab, then it'll give you the traffic source types. You know, where is most of your traffic coming from? So um, external traffic, uh, in, my, in my case, is is the top amount of traffic because I get a lot of traffic from Google, a YouTube search and direct traffic, suggested videos, etc. So once you go into those traffic source types, then just click on external, click on YouTube search, click on suggested videos. You know what are the what are the search terms that people are people are, uh, are, in, are finding your videos. So if you drill down into suggested videos, then you'll see the search terms that people, are how people are finding your videos. And then you can make make similar videos on those suggested search terms, uh, suggested terms. And then YouTube search, you'll find the uh, search terms that people are finding you on YouTube search. Then, uh, then over here on the right, you got impressions that led that led, how they led to watch time. So once you've identified those particular videos, you want to even drill down even further to look at what is it in that video that caused it to become a top traffic generator in your niche. So for instance, when you click on see more, on your traffic source types, then you can see the views, you can see the watch time hours, you can see the average view duration, you can see the impressions, I think it's impressions click-through rate over here, I think that's what it is here. Impressions click-through rate, to shrink that down a bit. Yeah, impressions. Uh, you can you can also if you click on the plus sign up here, then you can also add other metrics, other columns, to identify what is it about that video that caused it to get so much traffic. So, um, so you got the traffic source types there. So you can look at you know maybe 
uh, your top your top videos got a high average view duration. Maybe your top video got a large number of impressions or got a very high click through rate. So if you drill down, you can start, you know, maybe create a, a spreadsheet of your top videos and then look at those patterns, look at those characteristics that are common to all those top traffic generating videos. Maybe it's all, maybe they all had a high average view duration. Maybe they all had a, a high click through rate. And then, you know, try to, and then if you say, for instance, you identified, uh, say, your five videos that did really well on your channel and they all got a high click through rate, then you know those thumbnails were great designs that resonated with your audience. So then maybe you can create, you know, thumbnails that are uh, similar to the ones that got a high click through rate. Uh, if you've got a high average view duration or high um, audience retention, excuse me, high audience retention, that means those videos kept people watching uh, all the way through, or maybe 50% of your audience watched it all the way through. So then what is it, you know, what, what, uh, what about your delivery or what did you say or how did you, uh, you know, reset the attention of your viewers on that video? How did you deliver your content? So all these things, you kind of want to drill down and look for those patterns in your top videos and then see if you can duplicate it and then create, you know, when you create your next video, you can put some of those elements into uh, those videos. And um, out of all the videos that are on YouTube, most traffic comes from suggested videos. In my case, it comes from uh, external traffic, you know, Google search, but probably because my channel is like 12 years old. Uh, is that 2006? Uh, 14 year. Wow, 14. That's a long time. <laughs> but you know, most of your channel is probably like two or three years old. So, um, so look at those traffic patterns, identify the common elements, and then try to put them in your next video and try to get more, you know, try to boost your suggested videos traffic. So these are just some of the uh, video details you can look at. So average view duration is the estimated average minutes to watch per view. So you get a, a long view duration, that's really good. Average percentage viewed is the average percentage of a video your audience watches per view. So basically you get a high audience retention on your video. Then impressions is how many times your thumbnails were shown to viewers on YouTube through the registered impression. So how many, you know, how many thumb how many times your thumbnails were shown out to the audience? And then the impressions click through rate is how many people actually clicked on your thumbnail, then watched your video. So if you get uh a high number of impressions, that's really great. If you get a high impressions click-through rate, and you'll probably see that at the beginning of your video when a lot of subscribers uh, click on your video. So you get a high impressions click-through rate at the very beginning, but then maybe after a few days, you'll see it drop because your video will be, uh, be pushed out to other people besides your subscribers. So then you might see a click-through rate drop, but if it, it maintains a high click-through rate, that means YouTube is surfacing your video on other people's channels. So that's a good thing. Then unique viewers is the estimated number of people that watch your content within the selected date range. It could be 30 days, 90 days, etc. And views is obvious. Watch time is obvious. Well, with the watch time, um, it's the amount of time that people that have your watched the video, but your watch time uh, can also be extended if people watch more than one video. So say they watch, uh, you know, you, you send them to a different video at the in your end card or in a, uh, in the end screen, and then they watch two or three videos, then that's going to extend the watch time on that individual video. So that would be 
what's called session time. So if you get a long session time, that also improves your chances of getting your video promoted by YouTube. So uh, keep those metrics in mind and then drill down into your um, into your videos to see what uh, you know what what traffic patterns are similar for all, all your particular top videos. Okay, and the last one, I thought I'd just throw this in because I've been kind of experimenting with video ads recently. Uh, create a video ads campaign, a paid video ads campaign. So it could be, uh, could be YouTube video ads. It could be Facebook ads or Instagram ads. But uh, I thought I'd choose YouTube because I've done uh, campaigns before. But uh, the beauty about a video ads campaign is that you can steal your competitors' traffic. So I don't know if you know this, but you can, uh, with in-stream ads, you can set up an ad in Google Ads, and then uh, you can get all, you can get, you can find your competitors' videos, and then you can put those URLs of those videos into what's called placement targeting. And then when you create your video ad, and submit it and gets reviewed and then approved within 24 hours by Google, then your video will play in front of your competitor's video. So I got an example here. So like I, I played one of my videos, like this case study video uh, I did uh, last week and then up popped this video on Braxton. I don't know kind of nothing really to do with my videos, but uh, this is, you know, somebody clicked on my video, then this would be a, a like a an ad that would uh, call an in-stream ad. So basically, if people are interested in St. Jude, then they would click on the video or click on the uh, the uh, icon, the, the logo bottom left, and then they would be taken to that particular video. And this is how it looks uh, when you set up the ad. So mobile, you can actually even create a, a banner. And then that banner, you can put a little title like get, I put get views 2020. Uh, and then you can put a, a call to action like get it now or something like that. So that's how it appears on mobile and on desktop. The banner will appear at the top right. So this is uh it's kind of a great way to build your own email list. So you can send, you know, can send traffic, you can get traffic from your competitors. And I highly recommend just using it to build an email list and then you can recommend your products and services. It's gonna cost you a bit, but ideally if you have a product or an affiliate product, then uh, you can, um, you know, you can make some sales from that. So you can sell affiliate products or, uh, or your own products. So i got a course called mastervideoads.com. So you can check that out if you want to get more deeply into it. But it's just another way to get in front of, uh, to expose your content to a different audience. So maybe you can't expose your content to your competitors' channels. But if you wanted to, you could steal some of the traffic by creating a Google video ads campaign. And you can do the same, you can run an ads campaign on Facebook or LinkedIn, you know, as many different places. Okay, I just want to, um, questions to ask yourself, you know, when it comes to getting noticed on YouTube. So I just want to kind of, when I was putting this together, I thought, you know, what are the questions that people would, would uh, I kind of covered, but so, but it's, it's good. You know, who is your ideal subscriber? Um, you know, you want to drill down into what are their problems? What are their aspirations? What are their struggles? What kind of value are they? What kind of value can you bring to them? 
what makes your channel different to your competitors' channel? So what are your visual elements? You know, your channel banner, your thumbnails, your channel icon, etc. And how can you reduce the competition? So how can you find those uh, low comp- low competition keywords, those long tail keywords that are easier to rank for. So using the tool like TubeBuddy or Morning Fame, which I did a video on, uh, my last video was on that, uh, helps you to reduce the competition and makes it easier to rank for your particular keyword phrases. And then you want to expose your content to audiences outside YouTube by sharing your content on social media, on your website, on your blog, uh, convert convert your content to a podcast or uh, create a transcript and then uh, convert it to a PDF file, offer that as a free download or uh, submit it to content sharing sites. And then the other question is what small tweaks can you make to grow your channel? So you're kind of drilling down into your top videos to see what are the patterns that occur within your top videos and see if you identify them and then integrate those into your next video or your next 10 videos. And then keep an eye on your on your metrics, on your YouTube analytics to see are your views growing, are your subscribers growing? Or if you have any questions. So let me know if you have any questions uh, about any of this content, how to stand out on YouTube in 2020 or beyond. 